Hi guys, Slate Frost, Jonathan from Barvik. What we're going to do is run through the anodizing kits that we sell. So, uh, Jonathan, if you wouldn't mind. For the anodizing section, there's one bucket that's used. Well, the anodizing solution is re ready made. This, this is a one litre. You simply just pour that into the anodizing tank. Uh, next stage is very similar to the plating kit, but the polarity is the opposite in this instance. So, in, in this case, the sleeved bar is connected to the, the black clips yep. and the black connection on the, the power supply but as before it goes across the tank this will be the rod where the part is uh, attached to so that goes again again it can go like that if you want to it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. but the usual setup would be like that and then uh, what we have then is we need to attach uh, the power supply and control unit again this is a different power supply than the plating kit it's a fixed 12 volts um, higher current uh, power supply okay which plugs into the anodizing control unit. There's um, a bulb in there which provides resistance. If you, if you were to have no resistance in that circuit, you get too much current flow. The solution would heat up and it wouldn't anodize properly okay. over the duration. So there has to be some form of resistance in. So that bulb acts as that. Uh, during anodizing, what you initially find, when you first put the part in, the bulb will light usually quite brightly and then it'll dim and go very dim. Okay. And you may not even be able to see it because there's much less current flow after a few seconds than there is when yeah, you initially put it in. Put it but if you're in the dark room you might be able to see it just glowing but if it's if it's not lit it's not necessarily mean that it's not working. Okay. These again would go on the, the correct colour coordinations so we've got red on here and black on this one which is it's the opposite way around yep. to the plating kit but the same, same method of, of fastening. And then what we need to do is have the, the anodes in place. So again, like the plating kit, we have, we'll use the crocodile clip leads and they'll tie on here at the relevant height. So exactly the same as, as before? Exactly the, the same the, as the plating, yeah. except that they're now on different rods. And they, they can, the orientation doesn't matter. They can be fastened like that or like that. And these are made from? These are made from lead. lead right. And so those will be suspended again. You tie this knot at the at the suitable height, depending mm -hmm. on the volume of solution that you've got in the tank, making sure that the, the clip that's attached to the cathode doesn't touch the solution. And again, repeat again for the other one. And clip that onto that bar. Now, the, the, th the thing that's different between this and the plating kit is ordinarily, if you were, you were plating now, you'd take this and you'd attach that on there and that would be your part that you would lower in. But you, the only metals that can go in here are aluminium yes. and the lead of the... the, the so, we need, we need to use one of these. These are aluminium rods. So that will be the thing that's suspended in the solution. So, the, the method of attaching this to the part is really crucial because the anodizing process makes the aluminium non-electrically conductive during the process okay. which is obviously a problem if you're relying on it for, for the thing itself so this contact between the aluminium rod and the, the part that you're anodizing has to be incredibly secure yeah. if you were to just to form a loop and try and hang the part on that and rely on that that's almost certain to fail the two methods that you can do you can wrap this really tightly around the part several times and it's got to be really tight yeah. so that it's a really good mechanical connection as well as electrical or you can drill a small hole so that end can be forced into right on the and then suspended and then suspended I'm going to shorten this just for the okay. demonstration purposes a little, a little bright yep there we go and so you'd you could you attach that in the same way that you would and clip it onto there yep but what you have to do is make sure that the that this length is not long enough where this is in the solution yep again so, so it's got to be out of the solution the only to... piece that's in the solution is the aluminium and then yep. your part would obviously be on this end okay. and the, these can be shown to yep. adjust for yep. whatever whatever you're doing now does the the anodizing solution does that need to be uh, any heat or is it just as is just once you put it in it's already mixed straight in you can start you can start your anodizing yeah, straight process. in you you actually don't want any heat in that. Yeah. The, the actual current flowing through that solution, it's very conductive, actually produces its own heat. So that will actually warm the solution slightly. If you I mentioned before, if you didn't have that current limitation in there and you just had the full current on there, it would anodize quicker at a faster rate, but the temperature of the solution would be going up. Yep. And the danger is it would seal the surface 
before there's a thick enough layer and before the dye goes into yep. it. Okay. It's better keeping that as, as cool as you can. Yep. And again, the parts that we're going to anodize, clean. Clean in the Absolutely same way. Absolutely essential again. Yeah, yeah, make sure it's free of any contaminants, whatever you, you've maybe used. If it's an alkaline soap clean is commonly used. Yep. Make sure it's not leaving any residue behind and make sure it's rinsed off. So once we've done the anodizing process, how long would that normally take would you say on average? It depends on whether you're going to be dyeing it afterwards yep. because in order to produce a full depth of colour you need a certain thickness of layer that's produced. If it's for a small part maybe an hour, bigger part maybe three hours, so yep. that kind of time. Yep. If you're just anodising, if the anodised parts come out a dull grey, just the protection, that's the end of the process, it's just rinsed and then that's and then done. And dried, yep. yeah. If you want to add a dye, that's where the separate tank comes in. So again, the dye is usually supplied in one litre. That's diluted, again, with clean water. So what's the dilution rate for this? So that's... That's one litre, so, so you add four, four litres of water. Four litres of water, that. brilliant. Yep. That, that'll give you a five litre solution. So after the anodising's done, the part's lifted out, it's thoroughly rinsed. You don't want any of the anodising solution getting Left in up, the dye yeah. tank. And then they're lowered into the dye solution. The dye solution needs to be around 30 degrees. C to get full absorption so you'd have that set up before this because that's obviously going to take time. The dye solution then is better if it's agitated that means just moving it around so that all the parts get equal coverage yeah and that's where this comes in. This only needs to be installed right at the last second before it goes in and that's just an air pump that just provides air down at the bottom of the tank that'll move the solution around. Time wise 20 minutes is usually of that vicinity is enough to get full dye. I don't think there'll be much more dye absorbed after that so there's no point leaving it any longer than okay, that. Okay yeah we do a range of colours with the dyes as well there's reds, greens, blues, violets, yellow, gold as well. Yeah, gold. Nice yeah, gold finish right, as well. Yeah. So when that process is then done with the dye solution what then do we need to do after that? If you're just anodizing, it still needs to be sealed as well right. which I, I didn't mention. The sealing process is basically just putting the anodized part into boiling water. Again it's about 20 minutes, half an hour something like that and that closes it uh, so exactly the same when you set your dye part out, seal it with the boiling water, 20 minutes, yeah. and, and then that's it. And then yeah, that's you done. Done. yeah, you you may find little bits of dye coming out in the water as you do that because it isn't sealed at the start, and then that'll that'll stop. Yeah. So. How long will they, they, they last as you know as we go along? I mean, I, I know it's a bit of a. Uh, I don't know of any time limit yeah. on these. I haven't come across one where you'd say, well. It's expired it's actually, now. Yeah, it's gone. You know, yeah. the, the biggest thing that's going to cause a solution to not work anymore is contamination. Yeah. So make sure other chemicals are kept away from it and that it's clean. If you if you get anodizing solution in the dye, that'll stop it working. Right. So it's it's absolutely crucial. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you.